Hello everyone, this is Sean Daly for DailyVO.com and the Global Voice Acting Academy. So I'm super excited today because it's my first equipment review video. It's been a very long time since I've done anything since my Rode NT1 or my Steinberg UR12 or some of the various equipment reviews I've done. And mainly because I've been selling off some gear, I've been streamlining my studio setup, and I haven't had a whole lot of mics or interfaces around to review anymore. But recently, uh, actually a talent in our membership program reached out to me and was asking for my advice on sort of her first XLR microphone because she was saving all of, her pen or all of her pennies and really wanted a nice mic to try. So, or in about the uh, 200 to $300 range. Now, there are a lot of great microphones in that range. Like, for example, I've used the, uh, the Rode NT1, uh, the lovely kit that that comes with with the sh integrated shock mount and pop filter. Uh, the Sennheiser MK4, which is another popular one and is often favorably compared to the Neumann TLM-103 and the Sennheiser 416. And uh, I've also heard rumors of the uh, the Mic Tech MK300, which is another mic right in that $300 range with a really nice shock mount. Um, no pot filter, though, but it's supposed to make up for it by having a really nice sound. And it's got some cool... Um, polar pattern switches if you want if you need that if you're interested in having like figure eight patterns or omni patterns or whatever uh and, and then of course you have some other popular mics like the akg 214 or the audio technica at 4040 so all of these guys are at a certain level where like you're you're pretty like you're gonna get good quality so if whichever one you like but one mic that really caught my eye was this guy so sort of a new entry level, or excuse me, a new entry from Lewitt Microphones, which is an Austrian company, and they've really been making the rounds for having their own very unique style and just packing their microphones filled with so much like innovative technology and feature sets. Uh, for example, one of the first microphones that I had heard from them was the Lewitt LCT640, I believe. It was a few prior generations ago. Uh, microphone. Uh, I believe Jordan Reynolds, who's a voice talent and audio engineer, actually did a really nice um, blog article about that for Sound on Sound or RecordingHacks.com. I can't remember which one it is. I'll link, I'll link it in the doobly-doo, so don't worry about that. But anyways, that kind of piqued my interest in it, in a mic that was both competitive with sort of the industry standards, and uh, but still very unique. Uh, I believe they've been referred to as the Tesla of microphones, just kind of really um, innovative and technology and feature based. So, uh, I know another popular mic from them is called the LCT 550. And this guy's really famous because it's got basically like zero DBA self noise. So if you don't know what self noise is, that's sort of the inherent electrical noise of the microphone, how much, um, like ambient noise it produces, like the, the sort of static sounds you can hear on lower budget microphones. Uh, now, when you get into the 300 plus level, you get quieter and quieter mics. And that's what you want for voiceover because you don't want, um, you don't want to hear it in, when you initially record and you definitely don't want to hear it in the finished product when the signal has been compressed and normalized and boosted like that. You don't want to hear that at all. Um, but, uh, so that guy was famous for having a zero dB, which is just like imperceptively quiet. But it also had a bunch of additional features while being very cool. We don't necessarily need as voice talent. So for example, some of the features that the higher end models had, uh, they had multiple attenuation switches or also known as a pad, which is where you can kind of reduce the, uh, the level of the signal by 10 dB, 6 dB, 12 dB, depending on the model and how many options you have. So that might come in handy if you're doing character reads or like hard sell reads and you don't want to adjust your preamp outside of your booth or whatever. You just kind of push a button on the mic and bring the volume down that way. But that's not, I mean, you still don't really need that, do you? And then another feature uh, that they had that, that you don't necessarily need is a high pass filter, which is something that allows higher frequencies to, to sort of pass through the signal and uh, removes lower frequencies, either bass buildup inside of your booth or, um, or excuse me, or low, low end rumble from uh, external sources like AC units, refrigerators, trucks and planes in the background. So, um, so it sounds useful, but very often the, the high pass filter in a lot of microphones can actually increase the noise level. 
because you're adding more current into the microphone and sometimes it can affect the sound negatively. So, and very often you'll find that the high pass filter in a microphone doesn't sound as pleasant as using one on say a preamp or interface or in your software. And of course you'll have more control over it and you won't be stuck with it uh, because you didn't do it before, or you didn't do it as part of the recorded track itself. So what Lewitt did is they recognized that a lot of people weren't really using some of these features. So they wanted to create a model that was didn't have some of the extraneous features, but they really focused on the quality of the sound itself. So that's where this guy comes in. I think I've gone about five minutes talking about Lewitt without describing the name of the microphone. And this guy is the LCT 440 Pure. So uh, as it can say in the name, uh, pure is in the essence of the sound. So they, uh, like I said, they all they, they kind of stripped away all the extraneous features and really just focused on giving you a beautiful, beautiful sounding, beautiful looking microphone at an affordable price. So this comes as part of an integrated kit, uh, which I absolutely love. It's got this little, this very handy integrated pop filter and shock mount uh, and, and the microphone itself, all for about $269. And when you get the mic, or the excuse me, when you get the box that the mic comes in, you can find a sort of a quick start guide, a warranty card, uh, the pop filter, a shock mount, a very nice leather bag with the the Lewitt logo stamped onto it, and a nice little rubber band that you or wristband that you can put on your arm from Lewitt to show your love, <clears throat> as well as another pop screen inside. So it's really, for, for $269, that's a pretty incredible price for everything you get. I think the only direct competition it has with that level of, um, of kit is the Rode NT1. I don't have it with me, unfortunately, but um, it does share a lot of the same wonderful characteristics of that microphone in that it's, it's very quiet. Um, this guy has a uh, what's called an equivalent noise level or self-noise level of 7 dBA. Uh, you might know from uh, Booth Junkies videos, Mike Delgadio, that self-noise is often measured in either dB or dBA, which is an A-weighted system, where they kind of make it relative to the frequencies that we can actually hear versus the ones that, uh, that we, can, we can still measure for. So, for example, if it's a dB measurement, you're measuring all the frequencies that might exist, even the lowest and the highest ones that are far beyond the scope of human hearing, versus this guy, which, uh, or versus the, the A-weighted system, which only really factors in the ones that we can actually hear. Uh, so this one has a about 7 dBA, and then this studio standard, the, the Sennheiser 416, is actually 13 dBA. So even though that sounds like a lot more, this thing is still nearly silent when you play it. So already this is looking like a really good microphone for that entry-level price. And just kind of comparing the two in my in my headphones, I can tell that they actually sound pretty similar. It almost sounds like I'm just playing one track in mono right now. Um, there are some things that I notice that are a little bit different. When this one seems a little bit open, more airy than the uh, the Sennheiser 416, and that would be great for. I mean, you honestly you can't go wrong with either one of these, especially considering the price. Um, but, I mean, this one would be great for, for audiobooks, for e-learning projects, for, um, for commercial or whatever. It's certainly, like, I feel like this is a great mic to start with and just keep with you throughout your career. Because um, unlike, say, a USB mic where you might be stuck with all the components and when you like to upgrade, you kind of have to throw the whole thing uh, out with the bathwater. This guy, you can just keep getting a better preamp or whatever, or interface and you're just going to improve the sound that way. And right now we have both mics going into the SPL Creon, which is a um, it's a really it's sort of like a mid-tier preamp. It's about six hundred dollars new. Very similar feature set to the Audion ID22. Uh, it's a very popular voiceover interface, uh, but it's slightly different preamp. So I re I personally like the uh, the preamps in the SPL Creon more. But um, I've used the, like, the ID22, and it's still fantastic, still like it, still recommend it. Just my personal preference. So, um, but yeah, so I think they both sound great. And one thing that I, like, there's a couple of things about this mic that surprised me based on reviews that I've seen. And some people, and the first one is that Lewitt microphones occasionally have been, I've seen negative reviews about having too low of an output. But to tell you the truth, 
these guys, I actually had to set the, uh, the preamp lower on this guy to get the same amount of gain as the 416. So luckily, another thing I love about the, the Creon is that it actually lists the, uh, the amount of gain in decibels on the, on the gain knob so you know exactly how many dB you're using. So this guy's coming in at about 25 decibel, excuse me, 25 dB gain, and this guy is coming in all the way at 34, or 34, so about 75% or three o'clock if you're using the timing system. And um, I'm, I'm really, really impressed. Honestly, when I had them both at 34, this guy was peaking quite a bit. So uh, if you're worried about low output, or low output, yeah, <laughs> output, that's really not an issue. So um, another thing that I'm as cool as sort of, uh, this reminds me a lot of the Rode NT1 uh, integrated pop screen, which both of these things look pretty awesome, right? I mean, it, I love that both of them have a very like custom made um, sort of like very thought out design between the shock mount and the pop filter. It's, it's definitely part of a sort of integrated system. It doesn't look like they just kind of got this shock mount and that pop filter and just kind of blended them together and sold it as a, as a packet. But um, a lot of thought and design went into this. And some people complain that the, uh, the pop filter on this guy was not effective. But honestly, I got pretty dang close. And with good mic technique, I think you can do amazingly with this mic. I don't, I like if you're about here and you're doing like, for example, properly press the purple and black pleated plaid pants you own, like that's pretty good. Um, even if you're, you're doing an off axis and you're really close, properly press the purple and black pleated plaid pants you own. Um, sorry, it's one of my favorite tongue twisters from uh, Rodney Salisbury. Then it doesn't pick it up any worse then this guy over here, which might actually be worse, I don't know, but properly press the purple and black pleated plaid pants you own. Prepare to put your purple and black pleated plaid pants on. Um, so, like, it honestly, if you use good mic technique, I don't think plosives are going to be that much of an issue. Um, and so, honestly, I can't tell you how ecstatic I am about this mic. If I'm, I'm seriously considering getting one myself, but I think any... Uh, beginner talent or someone in looking for an affordable uh, large diaphragm condenser for for uh, excuse me for voiceover for audiobook work for podcasting as a backup mic as a talkback mic you really cannot go wrong with this guy right here so once again that is the Lewitt LCT 440 um, compared up against the studio standard 416 Sennheiser 416. I'm Sean Daly from dailyvo.com and the Global Voice Acting Academy. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you have a wonderful day and go get a nice mic, why don't you?